Did you know that businesses with diverse management teams report 20% more annual revenue than those that don't have them? I'm Nancy Schick of 30 Year Conflict Resolution, and we are an employment law and mediation firm based in New York City, but we provide services like diversity training and consulting worldwide. And what I want to do in this particular video is take some of the conversation forward from prior videos about DEI and where it stands currently. Bottom line is it's still happening in your workplace. If you're not looking closely, um, you probably have a diverse workforce already. You, it might not look that way on the surface, but I can almost guarantee you have diversity in race, gender identity, physical and mental ability, religion, and so on. Lots of protected classes there. So I'm gonna give you some tips in this video on where to start in diversifying your workplace more and doing it intentionally. First, I want you to review your dress code and your code of conduct. That is often where I see people will have disparate impact in their workplace based on the policies that they have. It's where their implicit or hidden bias often shows up based on things like what they think a woman should look like versus a man. What what do you do then when you have an employee who doesn't identify as male or female that considers them, themselves non-binary, right? Where do they fit in the dress code? And we know from the Supreme Court case in Bostock a couple of years ago now that if you are restricting, for example, men from wearing dresses, you cannot avoid that that is based on sex, which makes it gender discrimination. You start there. Then I want you to look at your job descriptions. It, are, you, are you using gendered language in them? Do you have physical requirements that don't actually make sense? For example, are you requiring your receptionist to lift 50 pounds, but maybe they're working remotely at this point and they aren't actually lifting anything in your workforce. You might be excluding people who could otherwise perform the essential functions of the job, which means that you might be discriminating under the Americans with Disabilities Act. You want to also look at what is an is essential fu job function versus a nice to have quality. And third, you want to start expanding your recruitment if you aren't doing this already. And I'm not just talking about the HBCUs, the Historically Black Colleges and Universities. We're also talking about looking at your state schools. And why do you do that? Because a lot of people who maybe are just as capable of getting into an Ivy League school just didn't have the same opportunity to get into a, a program like that. So you're a lot of times missing very resilient employees who are capable of troubleshooting on a variety of different levels because they're doing it in their own lives just to get their degrees. And make sure that you're looking at different types of job boards, different affinity groups, et cetera. Now, if you need help doing this in your workplace, then I'll put a link in the notes to the video to schedule a consultation with me. And of course, in the meantime, keep listening with your third ear for those hurts you can heal.